You might have heard Martin Scorsese has a new film out called Killers of the Flower Moon, but do you know the true story behind it? The Osage Nation, the tribe at the center of this story, historically controlled more than 100 million acres of the American Midwest. But by the mid-1800s, the United States policy of Indian removal forced the Osage to sell their lands and relocate to a relatively small reservation in what would become the future state of Oklahoma. The Osage, like other Native American tribes, struggled with their forced migration. It's estimated as many as half of the tribe members died in the first few years due to hardship. Food, medicine, adequate shelter, and clothing were all in short supply, and it seemed like there was little hope the tribe would see prosperity again. But then their fortunes suddenly changed. In 1894, oil was discovered underneath Osage land, and the demand for black gold was just beginning to boom. With the discovery of oil, tycoons flocked to the area to secure land and mineral leases for drilling. Historically, land was owned by a tribe as a whole and shared among members. But just a few years before all this, the federal government passed a piece of legislation called the Dawes Act of 1887. The Dawes Act forced tribes to divide their land into private plots to be distributed to their members. However, the Osage Nation successfully argued this only applied to surface land and that the mineral rights under the whole reservation were still owned communally by the tribe. This meant that some tribe members received payments for leasing their land to oil companies, but everyone in the tribe, at least at first, would be entitled to a split of royalties from the oil sales. On July 1st, 1907, a share of the royalties, called a head right, was issued to each member of the Osage Nation. There were 2,229 members, and even split among so many people, the payments were far from small. In the early years, head right holders received as much as $10,000 annually, worth about $320,000 now when adjusted for inflation. By the 1920s, the Osage were considered one of the wealthiest groups of people in the entire world. These head rights could be bought, sold, or inherited, and this is where things began to take a horrific turn. Starting in 1918, a series of mysterious deaths began to plague Osage County. Dozens of wealthy tribe members were becoming the victims of unsolved murders, and with their deaths, the ownership of their head rights and land was changing hands. The killings came to the attention of the Bureau of Investigation, the FBI's predecessor, and an agent named Tom White was dispatched to solve the case. His investigation made two startling discoveries. By 1925, at least 60 wealthy tribe members had died, and their head rights and estates were transferred through coercion, manipulation, and fraudulent wills to their guardians. The federal government had legally deemed more than 800 Osage families too incompetent to oversee their own finances and assigned local white lawyers and businessmen to be guardians who managed and protected their wealth. Millions of dollars are believed to have been stolen by guardians who were supposed to be working in their best interest. The other discovery was that almost every member of one Osage family was dying in quick succession by suspicious causes, including gunshots, poisoning, and a house explosion. 36-year-old tribe member Anna Brown's body was found in a ravine with a bullet wound to the head. And over the following months, her mother, a sister, a brother-in-law, and two cousins were also murdered. Agents and tribal leaders suspected a local white cattle rancher named William Hale was behind a conspiracy to profit on the deaths of these family members. He had fraudulently made himself the beneficiary of a $25,000 life insurance payment of one of Anna's cousins. But critically, his nephew, Ernest Burkhart, married the family's last surviving member, Molly, and came within a breath of claiming the wealth and head rights which consolidated with each death. Ernest had already begun poisoning Molly by the time the scheme came to light. Thanks to confessions, witness testimony, financial records, and circumstantial evidence, William Hale, Ernest Burkhart, and a hitman they hired named John Ramsey were sentenced to life in prison. However, Ernest was paroled after just 10 years, and Hale and Ramsey made parole after 20. For over 100 years, oil has continued to be extracted from underneath Osage County. Although the Osage Nation is no longer one of the world's wealthiest groups of people, tribe members who have inherited head rights continue to receive thousands of dollars in royalties every year, and payments may continue to their descendants for generations to come.